I'm Kim McIntosh and I teach biology at Shadow Mountain High School and today we're going to talk about evolutionary change and um, evolution is really just the change over time of species and we're going to look at the evidence for that and we're going to look at um, how it's determined if evolutionary change has happened or not in a species. So let's talk about evidence first. Um, there is quite a bit of fossil evidence for evolution. So we see that the Earth formed about 4.6 billion years ago. You can see that on this graphic down here. And we move up through these time zones. Um, uh, we have the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic. And these are very long, vast periods of time. And what we know from the fossil record is that for a large part of this time scale, there was not um, very much animal life, but then um, we start to see animal life and as we go through the fossil record, it, the animal life gets more complicated. Um, come up here, we get to the Jurassic period where there were dinosaurs um, and on up through. And one thing we notice is that on this time scale, humans have not been on this scale for very long. Um, so these are millions of years, and then we get up here and we're talking about time scales of like 10,000 years, things like that. So, um, but the fossil record does show us this change over time of, of these animals and the plants that were around. So another thing that we will compare is we'll compare genetic sequences. So we might see something, um, we might be looking at a chart of genetic sequences and see that um, there are 50 similarities between a human and a yeast, 59 similarities between a beetle and so on and so forth. Now taking a closer look at the fossil evidence, um, when archaeologists go out and they're looking for fossils, uh, sometimes they'll find a complete fossil, but that's rather unusual. Um, but they'll compare these fossils and they'll they'll try to put them in an in an order that would show the change over time. So they'll be they'll look at these and they'll they'll date them to see how old they are, and they'll look at particular structures. In, in this graphic here, you can see um, this tail-like appendage and how it has changed over time. Notice here you have the development of what looks like an actual leg, whereas you didn't have that in these three, and then on up to this one. And so this is showing that development. You can also look at the structure of the head or the jaw and see how it changes over time. And you get something that looks a, a bit more similar to what we see now. Um, in this graphic here, you'll see the skulls and you see this change over time in the jaw structure. And then here, this is showing the frontal view. And so you can see the change over time in the forehead, and the nasal cavities. And that generally that's how the fossil record is looked at. This, this um, right here shows just the jaw. So this would be the left jaw and this would be the right jaw looking at it from the outside. And so what they'll do with these fossils is they'll look at them in minute detail. And so they're looking at the individual structures that make up the jaw and how that has changed over time. Now this is um, a cytochrome C sequence. So this is a protein sequence and basically we're looking at the genetics of this. And so what we do here is we generally are comparing everything to the human. So across the top here this is the actual amino acid sequence for that, um, the gene that codes for that protein. And so we'll compare that to all of these different species. And you can see that this, um, the computer has changed the color on some of these amino acids. So 
that you can see the difference. We can look down here and say, okay, well, G is pretty standard. That doesn't really change. And D, it goes down there pretty consistently until we get to a starfish and it has a Q in there. So the amino acid has a Q right there instead of a D. So that would be an amino acid difference right there. And then the next one is a V and we can go down and we can look for differences and it changes right here. We see this amino acid difference right there is an I. And so we just go through and compare. If we're just looking at chimpanzee, we can say, oh, well, all of these are the same. It's pretty consistently the same throughout this amino acid sequence. We can keep going through and looking to see if we find any differences. But what we use this for is we use this to see how different our genetic code is from us to a chimpanzee to a spider monkey and so on and so forth. Um, this, uh, this chart is fairly in order and pr pretty much what we would expect that um, we have more genetics in common with a chimpanzee than we do with a yeast cell. Um, and you'll do a little more work with molecular evidence later. So one thing we found out from the fossil record is that we have what's called homologous structures. A homologous structure is a structure that it, it um, has the same basic design. So homologous means same. Um, it has the same basic design even though it's in different species. So what we can look at with these limbs for each one of these species is we generally have this bone up here and basically the same throughout these species. Small differences as you would expect but pretty similar. And then go through and then here, see those two bones there? Not much separation there. We see a little bit of separation here, but this one is thicker, um, pretty well fused together, which we might expect because a horse puts a lot of stress on that bone. In the lion, you see two distinct bones. In the human, you see two distinct bones. Same with the bat and same with the bird. color here. And then here in these what we call phalanges, we see that there are a lot of separate bones. Not so much with the horse, but we see the separate bones in the lion. We see these separate bones here. You can see these in the bat and in the bird. And so there are differences in the bone structure, but we see a lot of homology. We see striking similarities in all of these limb bones. We also have what we call analogous structures. And analogous structures are structures where maybe they developed and they do similar functions, but they evolved separately. So the human arm and the bird's wing bones are quite homologous. We see that they're rather similar in their development. But an insect's wing is an analogous structure to that bird's wing. So even though they do the same thing, they're designed for flight, they did not develop the same way. So those are analogous structures.